Well, we're sitting outside the grocery store and Tammy's inside getting a nice steak for my supper, so she's a good girl. Q&As. Uh, somebody's asking that we, I mentioned that we couldn't ship the large incubator to Australia. Can we ship it to the UK? The problem with this is, is we had some fixed costs we put up there for international shipping and the large incubator is so big and bulky that we absolutely lose money if we do that. So anything's possible. And I would say the thing to do is to call Cody uh, at 1-806-664-0173 and ask him what it's going to cost to ship, ship this to um, Australia or the UK. It can be done. It's just whether or not you can afford the price and we can live with it so we don't lose money. That's basically it. Um, see, I made some notes here. Um, somebody's asking about, um, oh, they've got a, um, a, a Frenchy boy who was, is 20 pounds. He was neutered at seven weeks. Is this okay? And he's small. And they're worried about the fact he's small. I, I don't know why somebody would neuter a dog at seven weeks. It sounds awfully early, honestly. Um, so I never had this experience with, with a dog that was neutered that young. Certainly I think it could impact because of the lack of testosterone, it could impact how the dog develops. I mean, look at this way, you know, what do we do back in the, you know, Arabian times, days gone by, the, uh, we'd um, castrate the, the, you know, we have eunuchs to look after the harem. And so, uh, you know, that, that can have some consequences on uh, body morphology. So the same thing may be going on here, but I don't get too worried about it. You not gonna put the testicles back in at this point. So you've got to live with what you've got. Small dogs are nice. If he's a healthy, happy dog, don't worry about it. I think it'll be fine. Uh, this person had a female that jumped the fence. The garden hose didn't get the, the dog separated. One of them was a huge dog, and they said the 223 gun did. That's a bit rough. I mean, you know, I don't know whether you meant you just fired a shot off in the air and the dog separated, or whether you shot the dog, but, but I would say this to the shooting the dog part. It's your fault that the dogs got hooked up because your dog jumped the fence. So you, the, the dogs that bred your dog didn't jump the fence. Your dog jumped the fence. So you're the one who's responsible for this. And so if you killed somebody else's dog because a dog did what they naturally should do, I think that that's a shame. And you need to think twice about what you did. My, my take on it. Other people may feel differently. Uh, if my dog, yeah, I, I don't want to go any further than that. Again, I, I don't want to, you know, the, the whole point of this channel is not to reprimand people, but I think it's a little unkind. I don't like the idea of it shooting dogs. Sometimes dogs need to be shot because they're doing terrible things, but that's not what this, these dogs were doing. These dogs were doing what they naturally do. So, and I think the takeaway from this, by the way, is if you leave a dog in heat unattended in your backyard, you'd be surprised on what that dog can do to get out and what other dogs can do to get in. And uh, the right answer to this is, is that you don't leave unattended uh, dogs that are in heat unattended because you may have bad consequences. Somebody's complaining that they are not answering their Q and A's. I'm not sure what happened here. Just re-ask. If you if you ask a Q and A that's very 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 long, it may not get answered because I do this live. Well, I say live. I mean I record this, but I mean I don't read through all the questions and think about replies. I do it on the fly. So if something's a very very involved question. It takes up too much of my time to read it and comprehend it to give other people waiting for my responses. So you just try to keep your questions, you know, relevant and short if you can. It makes it easier on me in terms of not boring everybody while I try to read through uh, what the question is. I made a mention about prices vary a lot on C-sections and, and some, some people chimed in here. Somebody said in Nebraska it's 350 bucks. Great, that's a great price. Somebody else said, and this is a good comment I thought, somebody else said, look on Facebook and find out what other breeders who are breeding your dogs, who they use and get some follow up from. That is a great answer. The more information you can get from other people about wh what are good vets and what their prices are will steer you in the right direction. And then the other thing they mentioned, and this is true as well, be careful because you can get quoted a price, but the bill can get run up significantly. Now I do see this a lot. So this is where I ask for a price on a C-section and I'm told 350 bucks and then I get the bill and it's 800 bucks. Why? Because the, the actual surgery was 350 bucks, but the pre-exam, the post-exam follow-up, the anesthesia, the antibiotics, the um, oxygen that were given to puppies, all the number of puppies that were born, all of this ran the bill up 
And I think that's very, very, not very nice way of doing things. I think that everybody knows when you called up and said, what's the price for C-section? And they said 350 bucks. You're not expecting to get a bill that's eight to 900 bucks. And I think that is a really poor behavior in terms of the vet. That, that they need to be transparent about this. When you ask an honest, straightforward question, you should get an honest, straightforward answer. And, and, and my thoughts on that would be, um, number one, once I've done the surgery, you're probably in it for the money. I mean, actually, you know what? If you had a written, if you had a written thing and you went to small claims court, they'd lose. But nobody wants to go to court, and I'm not suggesting that you do that. But I would complain in that situation. I'd say, look, I asked you what the price was. You told me 350, and you give me a bill for almost three times that amount. What gives? Negotiate the price, and maybe you negotiate the price, and that's great. You get a relationship with the person, and maybe you never go back there again. But I think it's crappy behavior, and I'm sorry that happened to you. Uh, oh, somebody here said, said they'd done a surgical AI, and they thought that their due date was on the day 58. And I said, no, I think it's day 60. Guess what? I was right. I love it when I'm right. So the point here is, if you have a surgical, you do a surgical later by day than you would do a vaginal. So typically, the, the numbers that you work out for approximate due date is... 63 days from ovulation. Normally a dog will be bred two days later. And so that's why we then use the number of uh, 61 days. And if it was a surgical, it's done one day later than that. And that's why we choose 60. But remember, it's just an approximation. It doesn't mean that's the right day to do the AI, excuse me, to do the, um, the C-section. The point here is it gives you a range where you know you're approximately in the right place and you pay attention to all the other things. And I've got videos on this about you know whether she's eating food what her temperature is whether it's less than 99 whether she's nesting and panting you know all these things figure in and then finally if you're unsure progesterone level of less than three means that you're in a safe place uh... so i think i already answered this in the, in the beginning part of this but this is another person who's getting worried about They'd sold the dog to somebody who's going to breed the dog on the second heat. The dog's 10 months old and no heat. What gives? It's just completely normal. Just don't get in a hurry. Just let her do what she does. It'll be fine. Uh, oh, somebody doesn't like our whelping cage. And I'm not quite sure what the complaint was other than one part. So the complaint, I think the part of the complaint was you couldn't get around the cage on all four sides. I'm not sure why that's even relevant. I do like a crate that has doors on the front and the back for me, so I can get into it easily. The doors on the side tend to be bigger and I can get my fat ass in there. Whereas one on the front, I have a hard time getting in. So that's, I just get my fat head in there. So I, but I do like a crate. I do like a crate for these reasons. You can put mummy in there. She knows she's not getting out. She's not gonna go off to Walmart and come back five hours later and find there's no puppies in the cage. She's taken them and spread them out all over the place. And some of them are cold and died. That's the primary reason that I like the crate versus an open cage. The second reason I like a crate is you can put a cover over the whole thing and you make it nice and quiet and calm in there and mums like that. And I just leave a little crack in the side of the where I put a blanket over it so mums can see out so they can see what's going on. But they like, you know, where does a dog go when it wants to have puppies? If you don't give it a whelping box, where does it go? Under your bed, in a closet. Why do they choose those places? Because they feel safe. They've only got one entrance point and they feel they can defend themselves in the event that somebody's coming in to attack their puppies. It's the same idea with the crate. So that's another reason why I like the crate. I don't like the Dura whelps, and we do sell uh, we do sell um, heating tapes for Dura whelps. A lot of people use them. I'm not crazy about Dura because they're pretty flimsy. They're kind of expensive and they don't hold up particularly well after you've used them many times. Another reason I don't like them. Then the final thing that they said here was, you know, we have these pig rail adapters that we give you that have basically bolts that go down in the four corners that hold up this pig rail. And we've had a problem with puppies can get behind that bolt and get trapped there. And they could, because especially in French with big heads, they can get behind there and get trapped. So the solution for that was to go, we supply you with some cut up pool noodles that basically fit over that bolt so they can't get behind there. And they said that was useless because the sponges will just move up. No, they won't. That we cut them just the right length so they cover the whole bolt up. And uh, they're not compressible, they're, they're, they're solid. So we, we think that's a great solution, but you didn't like it, so there's, there's my response to that. Uh, oh, somebody's asking about FDA requirements on our oxygen concentrators. 
So the answer is our concentrators are not FDA approved and should not be used on human beings. So anything that's used on human beings as medical has to have an FDA approval and our oxygen concentrator does not have an FDA certificate. It works fine, but you wouldn't use it for humans. And if you did, you could get in trouble. I don't know whether you can use it personally for it. You probably can. Um, and the last one here, because Tammy just showed up, is they did an AI and they had some sperm leakage arc. Afterwards, does it matter? Yeah, it does. But a little bit's okay. It depends on how much semen you had. If you had 10 cc's and you lost a cc, wouldn't hurt at all. If you had three cc's and you lost one and a half cc's, it might be significant. So the thing to about this is that when you do an AI, keep the dog's back end elevated for a full 30 minutes. Don't shy away from that. And if, when you put the dog down after 30 minutes, there's any leakage at all, straight back up with the dog's butt in the air. And if there's still leakage, pinch the, pinch the vulva closed and that you will solve that problem for next time. There we go. 11 minutes worth. See you. Bye. Watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.